No, right, guys, it is a cloudy, gloomy, but soon to be, I think, 83 degree day. What was that? Some sort of woodpecker here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here in what's left of the paradise of somewhere outside of Inverness, Florida, here on this muggy winter day. I think we're at Tuesday, January 14th. 2020 or somewhere like that so uh, I'm taking a break from uh, figuring out the septic requirements for uh, Citrus County Florida good Lord uh, I, I tell you don't even need to get into the septic anti-algae bloom requirements for Citrus County Florida that's another video for another day but today uh, I'm doing what I do every day and that is chronicling the collapse of a planet and we might have a tiny ray of good news here to share on collapse chronicles for a change but I'm gonna put the little dog down because there might be there might be a mousy is there a mousy or a, or a squirrely or what now, speaking of good news, this is at least some good news for me. I have several kind-hearted uh, listeners to send big thank yous out to, of course, my buddy Marty Knudsen, uh, the mysterious, enigmatic angel. Marty Knudsen, I really appreciate it, <laughs> brother, your latest uh, kind donation to my PayPal account. And we have three new patrons, three new Collapse Chronicles patrons, and I want to welcome aboard, let's see, thank you very much, Frank Van Will, Michael Lambert, and Teresa Shields for all becoming my three newest patrons on my Patreon page here at uh, Collapse Chronicles. And seriously, guys, for anybody who has ever through PayPal or Patreon or whatever, ever supported whatever it is that I do here on YouTube. I really, really do appreciate this, guys, knowing that that some of you are uh, appreciate what I do and stepping up to the plate to support me. And with that pleasant task, I guess time will tell uh, the next few years and decades whether this is good news or not. I do like this, uh, I do like this, I, and I'm sorry, I can't remember who sent me this uh, fine essay from Huck, Huck Magazine, <clears throat> but I must say uh, this put a big smile on this anti-natalist face, the no babies allowed sign. No babies allowed. All right. So what does Huck Magazine from their bleak new world department, uh, their bleak new world desk asking the question, will antinatalism soon become the new normal? Well, I guess when there are no humans left to, anyway. So this is by a woman, Francesca Newton. I'm not sure if Francesca, my, my guess is Francesca is not a breeder. So what does Francesca Newton in Huck Magazine have to say about the bleak new world and whether antinatalism is becoming the most intelligent, the only response to the bleak new world. <clears throat> With more and more people concerned about the Earth's future, many are flocking to a once niche ideology that argues for universal childlessness. All right, so she starts with a quote from a Facebook page. Is anyone here skeptical that humans will ever voluntarily go extinct? 
and for the record guys I am very skeptical that humans will voluntarily go extinct the humans with brains might voluntarily go extinct all the rest of the humans will involuntarily go extinct but anyway this is Francesca's uh, rant not mine okay is anyone here skeptical that humans will ever voluntarily go extinct? <clears throat> this is a question posted in one of Facebook's many anti-natalist groups. Above and on the feed is a video <clears throat> of human waste being dumped into a river and below a quote from Sophocles on the horrors of human consciousness. It is a dark place. <coughs> it is a dark place, <coughs> but also one that is becoming increasingly popular since the news emerged that the best thing, the only thing, you can do to reduce your carbon footprint is not procreate. <clears throat> Debates around childbirth have amplified. Now, with more <coughs> and more people concerned about the Earth's future, many are flocking to a once-niche ideology that argues for universal childlessness. <clears throat> Traditional antinatalism. You know, all the other reasons besides the collapse of a planet, that is traditional antinatalism, uh, has been traced back to ancient Greece, but the term is thought to have, the term antinatalism is thought to have first been used by a Belgian philosopher, Theophile de Giraud and made famous by academic David Benatar in his book Better Never to Have Been The Harm of Coming Into Existence. I've invited David to appear on the show but it's been a while. I need to get David on the show. Giraud and Benatar who both published their anti-natalist works in 2006 fixate on the suffering inherent in human existence, they believe that to have a child is to impose on it difficulty and death, and that childbirth is therefore morally indefensible. Social media has provided the perfect platform for helping to spread this message. The most popular anti-natalist group on Facebook, whose name cannot be given due to risk of being closed down or zucked. <clears throat> I don't even want to know what all that is, zucked. I, I do like that term, uh, being zucked, meaning having your Facebook page shut down for being uh, whatever reason has around 7,000 members. On Reddit, our anti-natalism boasts 46,000 members and counting. <clears throat> Some of the movement's new converts buy into Benatar's traditional gloom. The Reddit uh, <clears throat> page is full of content like this. Uh, as an example from someone known as Void Poster. Quote, From the moment we are ripped from the womb and thrust into existence, we owe a debt paid only in suffering. Close quote. Other members hone in on environmentalism instead. One image doing the round on Facebook showed a circle of wildlife accompanied by the slogan, Save the Earth, Don't Give Birth. For many anti-natalists, the slogan, Can't Feed Them, Don't Breed Them, is a recurring 
mantra. Yes, can't feed them, don't breed them. This is really a rocket science here, guys. <clears throat> so now we're going to go from Reddit to Facebook. For Facebook anti-natalist, the nature of their platform means that pregnancy announcements or baby photos are readily available for collective scorn. In one particular group, philosophy and ecology have been replaced by a sociological perspective. Members are heavily critical of the pro-natalism inherent in human society, believing that parents, more commonly referred to as breeders, that breeders receive a societal privilege over the child free. That is exactly what breeders receive. Every single thing in this global industrial society is uh, pro-natalist and anti-anti-natalist. Uh, anti <clears throat> uh, screenshots are regularly shared of parents expecting discounts or line jumps purely for the virtue of having children. One picture recently posted showed a restaurant bill on which the customer had written, quote, sorry, no tip for you, Christmas is coming with three kids. And the, the breeder drew a little smiley face as her tip uh, on her restaurant bill. Scrolling through this Facebook page, it would be easy to think that antinatalism is an intellectualized term for people who simply don't like kids. But beneath the layer of salt, critiques can be heartfelt and occasionally illuminating. One post about a local buy and sell group co-opted by mothers. A member pointed out that for those with certain histories or conditions, constant bombardment with child content can be traumatic. Others have predicted that the trend for parents posting funny baby content will have negative consequences for the social lives and mental health of the children involved. Irrespective of personal views on the ethics of procreation, it is, it is impossible to unsee how overrun with pro-natalism our public platforms are. But it's not all enlightenment. <clears throat> One of the pitfalls of these circles is the tendency of discourse to slip into political no-go zones without anyone seeming to notice or to care. Pictures often appear of babies with genetic illnesses or disabilities and the group's comments invariably revolve around the cruelty of the adults who passed on those traits. Others rage at screenshots of parents-to-be asking for financial support. <coughs> Can't feed them, don't breed them is <coughs> a recurring mantra. And then another recurring mantra <coughs> If universal childlessness is unlikely, but a reduction in birth rates is necessary, who keeps, who gets to keep having kids? This is where, of course, the New World Order depopulation agenda uh, conspiracy theories start creeping in to this otherwise intelligent discourse. So let's talk about this for a minute. 
While comments like these seem like a logical extension of the anti-natalist creed, <clears throat> if existence is already a struggle for the able-bodied and financially stable, bringing into the world someone for whom life will be more challenging must be even more of an offense. The implication here is that rich, neurotypical, and able-bodied people have more of a right to procreate than others. <clears throat> In this, those who adopt the anti-natalist banner risk drawing connections between their movement and ideas about eugenics and social cleansing. It's perhaps not surprising <clears throat> that the vast majority of members in these groups are white. <coughs> and again, guys, this is Francesca's <clears throat> essay. It's not mine. But once again, I, with, uh, with my interest in this, uh, I continually find that uh, people do not understand the definition of the word eugenics, at least from my anti-natalist perspective, is that every human should stop having babies. It has nothing to do uh, with the color of your skin or whatever. Uh, everybody needs to stop breeding. But I know I don't speak for all anti-natalists. Okay. This, <clears throat> I guess, this whole eugenics BS, this is one of the central issues of modern anti-natalism. If, as most accept, universal childness is unlikely, but a reduction in birth rate is necessary, who gets to keep having kids? Tensions like these are predictable growing pains in a movement that grinds so hard against normal thought patterns. Daniel, an admin for one of Facebook's anti-natalist groups, tell me, tells me disagreements are common. <coughs> Quote, quoting this admin for one of these Facebook pages, quote, there are rifts between the philanthropic and misanthropic over whether antinatalism includes non-human animals or not, and whether to do activism or not, he says. There are also consequential ethics versus deontological ethics and views on death being good or bad, close quote. <clears throat> a lack of cohesion could be reason that the movement is struggling to shrug off its characterization of a theoretical curiosity rather than a viable belief system. Going back to Daniel, any person who expresses anti-natalist views in public tends to be met with hostility or confusion. The typical knee-jerk reaction is the reply, why don't you kill yourself? A question to which different branches of the movement would have different responses. And uh, I'm not going to get in, in, into this. Uh, well, I am going to get into this from my branch of the anti-natalist movement when I hear this ignorant question uh, about why don't you kill yourself. Uh, it would do absolutely nothing to kill myself. Uh, to make a difference on this planet. Uh, but the buck stops here, just in case any one of you is not aware of this. I got a, I voluntarily got myself sterilized at age 22. 
uh, before I had any children. It is the one and only thing you can do. So the buck stops here. This ignorant, ignorant, uh, that, that, con the, why don't you kill yourself? You know, I, it, 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 the layers of ignorance and stupidity and cluelessness. Anyway, moving on. <clears throat> Daniel thinks it is unlikely that a majority of people will ever subscribe to antinatalism. Quote, I'm sure most people on the street still have no clue what anti-natalism he says. <laughs> Do you think so, Daniel? I wonder how many people, uh, if, if I walk down the street today with a $20 bill in my hand, uh, waiting for the first person who could describe the term antinatalism, uh, at least 500 people. But bigger waves of people join his group each time the philosophy pops up on Vice or the BBC, which because of its initial strangeness and the worsening climate crisis is becoming fairly often. <clears throat> And I will give good points to uh, Vice and, the, and BBC for treating this issue seriously. In 2018, an academic at the University of Oxford claimed that falling fertility rates should be received positively. And then remember uh, when that man in India brought a lawsuit against his parents for having him. However counterintuitive it may seem, antinatalist activity is moving beyond the computer screen and the philosophy textbook. Daniel might be pessimistic, but it is still early days and as the climate crisis worsens, it's hard to see how a belief system based on the assumption that humans are bad can do anything but flourish. Yes, well, that all depends on your definition of flourish. But anyway, it is uh, good to see a ray of hope that a few people are uh, making the voluntary decision not to bring children onto this planet for all sorts of reasons. As they figure out, it is the one and only uh, lifestyle choice at this point in the collapse that anybody can make to lower their own carbon footprint and to, uh, if nothing else, uh, save the life of their own unborn child. The best way to save your unborn child's life is never to have a child. Anyway, I've got to wrap this up because I have to go uh, talk to some uh, septic pumper to get some old septic tank pumped out of some alligator infested swamp in Point Lonesome, Florida. So get out there and uh, enjoy your antinatalism while you still can. Bye, guys.